And good evening, everybody. It is Thursday, January the 20th of 2022. Welcome to our midweek devotional discussion time together tonight. Glad you were here. Hello to everybody that has joined us online on Facebook or watching later on Facebook or on YouTube. And hello to everybody that has called in or has joined us on Zoom. Good evening. Buenos noches. Hello. Como esta? <laughs> That's how are you? <laughs> I'm tired myself. Long day at work, but oh I'm mercy. I'm just happy to be here. Happy to be able to be here. Yes. Glad everybody else is here as well. Hello, Pat. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Is it still daylight? <laughs> it's, it's afternoon though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's in California. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there a singing going on out in California? <laughs> yeah, they have a big one out there sometimes. Oh, my goodness. Well, not often, but they do have it. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't never go there. <laughs> I know. It. Hello, Judy. Hey, everybody. How are y'all doing? Pretty good. How about yourself? Doing well. Staying in, staying warm. It's cold out there. Y'all got the fire going? <laughs> no, not today. It is cold. I decided the fire's a whole lot of work. I don't think I like fire. A fire's lucky. <laughs> Antoinette just joined us. I like my I like my gas logs that we have here in our yeah. house. We've never, we've yeah. never oh, had them yeah. And those are nice. You don't have to deal with any chopping wood, any smell in your house, none of that. Exactly. Oh. I, I'm going to work on that as a project to, All right. to get them. Don't forget no shoveling ashes. Yeah. Right. yeah that's right. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. That's the worst part of it. Uh -uh. And bringing in wood, that's hard work. Bringing in wood, yeah. Well, I thought it was bringing in the sheaves. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work as well. Sorry, Antoinette. <laughs> oh. Never know what you come into on this bunch, that's for sure. <laughs> Hello, well, Sherry. Sher Sherry's, Sherry's watching on Facebook, apparently. She's commenting as the church. It shows up as the church commenting instead of her, but hello, Sherry. Hello, Sherry. Oh. <laughs> she is, uh, she, she's being anonymous. Tomorrow. I know. <laughs> My mic was muted when he said bringing in the sheaves. I said bringing in the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, greetings, everyone from Asheville, Alabama, from Mary and her mother, Mary, and me. And uh, we have a special guest with us tonight. All right. All the way from Sailorsburg, Pennsylvania. Good. And uh, how far is that from where you grew up, Antoinette? I, matey, I don't know where Sailorsburg, Pennsylvania is. <laughs> <laughs> the Poconos. Oh, the Poconos is about two and a half hours. Hey, uh, Dominic said he's heard of you. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> poor, poor Dominic. <laughs> uh, Sure Dominic. was a pleasure meeting Dominic yesterday. Yeah, uh, he, he said he was glad you got to meet him too. <laughs> I was tickled to death. <laughs> Felt like I knew him, but yeah. well, I'm glad to <clears throat> for the name. This, uh, th this August, uh, Dominic and I will have been friends for 46 years. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Is it yeah. Saint, Saint Dominic? Yeah, it's uh, a lot of people think that about him. He uh, he's just chuckling in the background. Over there. No, we need to get you a dual camera set up so we can see the other half of your house when people are in there with you. I know. <laughs> Got two cameras. Here we go. Uh oh. Let's see. Boy, this is crazy. There's the wave, Dom. Hey, Dominic. Hey, everyone. 
Hey, Dominic. How are you? Let's see, and there's there's Mary Jean. Hello. There's her mom over there on the on the couch. Who's the cat? Yeah, the cat. Sit down. That's Gus. Uh, she's Gus over there with her. She's on the couch with Gus. On the couch with Gus. Ow. 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 Let's see. There you go. Yeah, about that. There you go. You're good. <clears throat> good deal, Lucy. But that's uh, that's what's happening here in the in the Dismuke household tonight. And uh, I tell you what, it's cold outside. It is. So, I came out of the office. It was 30 <laughs> degrees and wind was kind of blowing a little bit it's something well uh i tell you uh let's let's open with a word of prayer and we'll go to our prayer list uh dear lord i just want to thank you for this opportunity to gather tonight lord i thank you for for good friends and family and uh lord we thank you for all the blessings of life and tonight i ask that you would just watch over us as we uh uh, commune with one another and uh, offer our our thoughts and prayers and uh, just come together virtually and uh, we're, we're thankful for this time that you've allotted for us uh, for these things we ask in Jesus name amen, yeah. amen. <clears throat> all right uh, one thing I wanted to uh, mention is uh, the uh, the Walker family uh, my uh, good friend Tex Walker uh who has been to church he was kind of a biker guy with a ponytail and tattoos and a vest and uh he passed away today oh, oh uh, 11, 11 around 11 30 today uh <clears throat> they put him in icu last weekend and he just uh couldn't hold on and uh he uh I, i've known uh Text probably a little bit longer than I've known Dominic. It'll uh, it'll be forty nine years uh, this fall. Uh, but it's uh, it's it's sad. But I tell you, it's uh, a lot of people are sick. Uh, a lot of people are dealing with uh, uh, with this virus, and uh, we just got to be careful and uh, just uh, do all we can to. Uh, okay stay safe <clears throat> all righty uh so uh let's remember the walker family uh i don't can know I any just, uh yes ma'am can i ask you a question is that wally's brother that is wally's baby no it's not his baby brother uh T terry is number three Oh, uh, yes, I but yes, it is. It, it is Wally. Do, do you know what year Wally graduated or what, what class he was in? He was younger than me. Uh, I think maybe 74, maybe. Yeah, I, I, 74, 75, 76, yeah. in that range. I don't, <clears throat> and then and then it was David and, and then Tex and then Darren's the baby. Okay, I hate that. And I think that's all of uh, them. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, 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 that is them. And he was married to uh, Julie Hamilton, Judson Hamilton's daughter. Oh, yeah. She was, yeah. She was from our, our neighborhood, yes. Yeah. She mm -hmm. was. Lived, of course, Judson, you know, down on List Ferry Road. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, anyways, let's, let's remember them. Uh, uh, and happy to uh, report that uh, Mary Jean is doing better. Uh, still, still not out of the woods, but uh, she is doing better. She is spending less and less time in the in the wheelchair. Uh, I, I've noticed that she gets in the wheelchair anytime she wants me to do so. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> but anyway I'm, I'm we are thankful for progress for sure absolutely uh, uh, i want you to remember becky deganji uh dominic's sister-in-law and uh dylan deganji uh dominic's nephew uh, 
And also remember Don Abramovitz, Julie Lola Ruth Adams, uh, Jeff and Judy Blackwood, Johnny Blackwood, Terry John Elizabeth Calhoun, Ron and Rebecca Carr, uh, the Click Program, uh, Daryl, who's on dialysis, <clears throat> Mandy Donigan, Jay Eads, uh, Brian Mintz and FCA, Robert Freeman, Joyce Fuller, Annette Harmon, Mary Mays Heinfeld, Hunger House Ministries, Henning and Susanna Jorgensen, Martha and Max Little, The Love Center, uh, Tammy McGinnis, Helen Mitchell, Mariah and Ben, still praying for Pat's miracle. We've got Stan and Diane Phillips, including uh, Drew and Julianne, uh, Mary Elizabeth Quinn, uh, Virginia Rowe, Laura's sister Sandy, uh, Emily Sims, Anita Smith, Glenn and Renee Summerlin, uh, Way the Cross Ministries, the Wayne family, Melissa Zavala, uh, Tommy Edwards, the Freedom Center, uh, all the school children, teachers, parents, and uh, everyone associated with them. We've got the Allison family, Wayne, Christy, and Courtney, uh, Jody Daniels, Harry Butler. The uh, Cole family, uh, Chris Whitten, Pat's sister Betty Harris, uh, Pat's grandson Nick, Don Kaysen family, Hal Kane's mother uh, Nell, uh, Jackie and Leanne. Uh, we got the Randall family. Uh, uh, the Myers family, uh, Leash, Lisa McCreelis, and of course, Hal and Antoinette. Peyton Joyner. Pey Peyton Joyner. Peyton Joyner. Okay. Are there any others we need to add tonight? Nora called me and her friend that lives up in Chattanooga, uh, Mark Waite. His mother has been in bad shape for a long time. She had a stroke back, but they're not expecting her to live now. So remember Mark and his family, Mark Waite. Okay. You can take Nick off. He's doing great. So. And the uh, Wayne family also. Okay. Joe, you can take the Kaysen family off as well. Okay. Jay's probably, I'd say he's probably 95% recovered. Who's that? Jay. Okay. Now we, got, now we got to worry about Sherry. Okay. Well, let's put Sherry on there. Let's put Sherry on there. Like I said, Sherry's watching with us on Facebook and it's commenting as the church. It's not commenting as her name. And I, Sherry, I don't know how to fix that because I, I'm looking at the same screen you probably are and I don't see an option to change that. So we know it's you though, even though it's important being I, church. You know, it does that to me sometimes and it does that because y'all are administrators yeah on the account you, there's a way to switch and, and then because it has asked me do, do you want to comment as horton ben or joe disney yeah it's asked me that i don't but i don't know where you do that at <clears throat> well mark mark probably hit the button somewhere yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay a any others we need to add take off well, I, I just want to say Hal and I are doing great, but please keep praying for us just for God's grace and mercy. Amen to that. Amen. And we've got a prayer request for a job opportunity with Mariah and JR. They started their oh. in interview today and their training. And I just hope it will last and get into eight or 10 years, maybe. Very good. That's Amen. great. Okay. Any others? 
Okay. Well, there's our long list. And uh, we will lift those up at the end. So we will get started. And we're starting with Friday, January 14th. And does anybody have any that they would like to uh, claim tonight? Hang on. <laughs> um, just throw me in there when you need a break. Okay. What? You you can you can do the first four then. Okay. <laughs> it works for me. And that Joey guy can do the last three. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I can do any of them tonight because I'm here. Yay! Y'all y'all do remember that uh, uh, that Joey guy was almost related to the guy sitting on the couch in here. Yeah. yeah. I'm the one that inherited that name, Dominic. <laughs> oh, it's that Dominic, the, 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 yeah. that Joey guy. Well, actually, actually, that was his dad. Okay. He was, was okay. also named Dominic. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Uh, his dad, his dad had a uh, uh, had a gentle way about him. Of uh, he, uh, he he knew how to express his opinion. Apple don't fall far from the tree. <laughs> now, I tell you, Dominic is is a whole lot easier to get along with than his dad was <laughs> in his early years. In his early years, I tell you, Dominic's dad he he he, uh, he softened up a bunch in his, in his later years. He was a, pl a pleasure to be around. Mm -mm -mm. A lot of a lot of good memories, a lot of fun times. Though, I tell you. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I will, I'm going to start. And then you can't. Just, oh, you I can't? can't do Friday. <laughs> I've stolen it. You said the first four. I'll do the first one. Okay. You can go right. after. I, you right. know I can't do them more than one in a row. Okay. <laughs> All right, take off. All right, here we go. The look is somebody bullying your pastor. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you Peter replied. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Luke 22, 60 through 61. I was bullied in middle school. I was nerdy. I didn't wear cool clothes and I was hopeless at sports. I took solace in my friendship with Tariq, an exchange student from India. Like me, he didn't, he just didn't seem to fit in, but we had a connection through our common pain. One day, as I walked to school, three football players actually talked to me. I was ecstatic. As we approached the school, I saw Tariq by the doorway. Instantly, the football players began to tease him. My desire to be popular was overwhelming, and I'm ashamed to admit it. I joined them in teasing my friend. I will never forget the look Tariq gave me at that moment. He didn't say a word, but I could see the sense of betrayal <clears throat> and sadness in his eyes. Peter must have felt the deep shame when Jesus looked at him after Peter denied knowing Jesus. But Jesus didn't content, condemn Peter. Rather, I believe Jesus looked deep into Peter's soul and saw the bold man of God Peter would become. When we feel shame for our mistakes, forgiveness is a prayer away. Jesus always looks upon us with unconditional love. And the prayer focus for that one is students being bullied at school. It's from Tom Smith from Utah. And the thought for the day is God is looking at me today with eyes of forgiving love. And... Uh, <clears throat> Yesterday, I, and I posted a verse last night, and I don't post every day right now because there's just been so much going on. But um, last night's verse was kind of talking about the, the, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And my I thought favorite. about, amen. My so, favorite. Your favorite? My favorite. Amen. 
<clears throat> but I thought about with that verse, how many times in the past two years, the word COVID or COVID-19 or something related to health related matters has come out of my mouth. And how often do I give God that much praise and credit? I mean, COVID is like all over the news. It, it you know, pretty much you order a Happy Meal and, and they're like, hey, and here's a COVID Band-Aid, you know? <laughs> and it's like, <clears throat> um, but do I give the Lord as much praise? Is, is he as constantly on my mind as, as COVID has tried to become and be that pervasive? And so I think, you know, when, when Peter denied the Lord, it was, I mean, it was three times, but it was all on the same night. But how often do we take our faith and our, and our eyesight off of the Lord and just look around? And um, so that's, that's why I wanted to read the look. And Joe, I'm sorry if I bullied it away from you, but it wasn't the bullying part, but it was just that look of forgiveness that the Lord gives us when we, when we turn our eyes back to him. And so... Um, that's really why I wanted to read that. Amen to that. You know, growing up <clears throat> being bullied, and it's hard to imagine the biggest guy in school being bullied, but I was. And uh, it's... Uh, it's it, it's it's a tough thing to deal with, and uh, I, I tell you, it it, it gives you uh, a heart of compassion for other people. Uh, probably not as much as I should have, but uh, it, it 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 does make you realize. Uh, especially when other people are being taken advantage of. But uh, this, this one really hit home with me, uh, for sure. The uh, mentioning the football players or athletes or jocks in general. And uh, it's, uh, it's a cruel world out there sometimes. And, and I think that's why God calls on us to do our best to pick those people up. I lost contact with him, but there was a kid that sat behind me and I think it was the fourth grade. I never will forget it. He had a knife and that was before knives were banned at schools. They should not have been then anyway, but he was trying to cut my belt behind me and I reached back and grabbed it of course cut my thumb but I saw him about gosh it's been about 10 years ago and he said do you remember that day in school and I said Jackie I will never forget that day and he said I'm sorry for that but what I was trying to think of exactly how he said I didn't realize what I was doing, I was being a bully with the word, a capital B. And he said, I have since turned my life around. And I still can't remember exactly what he said, but he said that was the most promising sentence that I gave myself is when I gave my heart to the Lord. And I said, Good for you, buddy. And he uh, he was he was a lot taller than I was, black headed. His name was Jackie Handy. I never will forget that kid sitting behind me. I just grabbed my thumb like that and pinched it. Never said a word. Never told anybody about it. And then when I saw him here several years ago, and what he told me was just amazing. Amen. It's a blessing. It was. It really was. It's amazing to me. I, I, unfortunately, I was never a victim of bullying that I know of anyway. Uh, I'm sure I was, things were said in the background or whatever I didn't know about. But um, it's amazing the stories I hear of, just like you said, Jerry, 
the individuals that bully and they do all this in school and you hear about them 10, 20 years later and they've completely turned their life around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, right. just, it's just awesome to hear that. And, um, yeah, I was thinking about too, you know, every time you hear about a school shooting or something happening, it most, it most always links back to somebody that has been bullied and harassed and they yeah. have just reached their point. And unfortunately they take it out on everybody, you know, they can. And, um, you know, we haven't had any situations like that lately. It seems like, cause I guess virtual stuff, COVID and all this and everything, but I'm sure there's, I'm sure it's still going on. It, it, it didn't so. stop for sure. Yeah, absolutely. As I always say, it just reminds me to be the kind of person that is, is, is that that you know, if Jesus was following behind me. Yeah. So, and he is. He always is. And he always is. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> My voice is um, it's coming and going, so please forgive me. But when you talk about school shootings. Obviously, I, I'm, I'm a public school teacher, and there are two names of people that I never met that stay in the back of my mind, <clears throat> Noah Klebold and Aaron Harris. And I just think, how did two kids go to school, change from, you know, dressing normally to all black and this and that and the other, and nobody noticed? And um, I really try with the kids at school. I'm at a new, I, I'm changed schools this year, so there's a lot of kids there that I didn't know. But just trying when I see them coming in the morning, hey, good morning, because maybe they haven't gotten a hey, good morning at all that day, you know, and so I, I really try to be a positive voice. I try to really, really, and it sounds corny, but I try to be the hands and feet of Jesus, because I never know what they've heard that morning, or maybe they got themselves up and brought themselves to school and walked to school, and nobody has said anything to them. So, you know, I see the kids you know, when they're coming in in the mornings and I, and I greet them, hey, good morning. Hey, you look great today and this and that and the other. And some of the kids, some of them I've never seen before, you know, but when, when there's a positive and you can, you can give them a smile, even behind a mask, it makes a difference. It, it, it really, really does, so. I can tell by the tone of your voice that you're smiling. Absolutely. No, they can't. I'm just kidding. Good morning. I'm glad Good you're here. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> There's some of them I'm glad I'm wearing a mask. It's like, Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> anyway. To tell on to tell on my wife real quick, um, she said that she's glad that she has to wear a mask now at work because of the things that she deals with sometimes. That yeah. people, just, people can't see her, her facial <laughs> expressions. <laughs> yeah. anyway, I'm sorry. That was off subject. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is all good. <clears throat> all right, let's pray. Loving Savior, help us to remember that you, that your boundless love and sacrifice covers all our sins. May we look at others the way you do. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'll do Saturday. <clears throat> More than words. Be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. That comes from 1 Peter 3, 8. As our instructor talked on and on, I saw a classmate squirm in his seat. During a break, he explained, sitting and listening is so difficult for me. I prefer doing, touching, seeing, smelling, and even tasting. I am an experien experiential learner. While reading today's scripture message, I recalled that conversation and thought that Thomas must have been an experiential learner. Although traditionally he has been called Doubting Thomas, I think maybe Thomas processed information best by receiving it through the comp through a combination of senses. Perhaps the report from other disciples didn't involve enough of his senses for him to process that information easily. Only by hearing, seeing, and touching could Thomas accept Jesus's resurrection. That same hesitance to accept the gospel sometimes hinders us today. We may regard sermons as boring because words alone exclude the other senses. 
For some, communion fills that void through touch and taste. Others enjoy children's sermons that often involve multiple senses. When we are understanding, when we are understanding of those who receive the gospel in different ways, we fulfill the charge in today's quoted scripture. We may need their understanding of our differences too. And that comes to us from Mary Hunt Webb from New Mexico. And the prayer focus is on experiential learners. And the thought for the day is using all my senses can open me to God's presence. Uh, Well-known story I've told you many times, but uh, one of the first few times I went to church at the Highlands, I was uh, kind of critical of the music and, and buddy of mine was on staff there. And I said, you know, I said, I just, it's hard for me to get into that music. It's just really not doing anything for me. And he, and I'll never forget it. He looked at me and he said, Joe, he said, the music isn't for you. It's for people out there that's never been to church. It's for people out there that don't know Jesus. And, uh, and you know, but, but not every song was not for me. I mean, I enjoyed it and I enjoy it now. I went to a Christmas service uh, there this year. And, uh, and I think it's important as a church for everyone to understand that, that people people worship differently. Uh, people uh, receive the gospel differently. Of everyone out there, how, how many people have ever heard a sermon and said, you know, I didn't get a thing out of that sermon? Has anybody done that? Except for last Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> Not even then. <clears throat> well, I, I, I have said that. And, uh, you know, I, I used to think that every sermon was supposed to reach every person in some way. But somewhere along the road, a wise person told me that, uh, you know, Joe, they said, that sermon may be for one particular person in the congregation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Nobody else may get anything out of it except for that one person. And, and that sermon may make a difference in their lives. And, uh, you know, when I, when I thought about that, it, it really made a difference to me uh, that, you know, that I don't have to try to impress everybody every Sunday. It just all, all I can do is just follow God's leading on the message. That's all we can do. Any thoughts from anyone? That's what I was going to say, Joe, is um, I just follow when the times that I'm asked to speak, you know, um, I just follow the best I can the way God, what God wants me to say. So I hope I can reach everybody, but if I'm reaching one person, then I'm doing some good, I guess. <laughs> it's all worthwhile. Through his, through his words. Well, it's just like that Sunday that Jackie woke up. He might have been the only one that heard the message that day. And it touched his life and changed his heart. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Okay. Also, also, oh. learned, also learned a new word, eh? experiential. Never really heard that before. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I consider myself an experiential learner. I I, I like doing. Yeah. It. Uh, I mean, I I can learn by listening, but I tell you, if, if I can do hands on, it makes it a whole lot better. <clears throat> I agree. Kind of hard to learn how to play football sitting in a classroom <laughs> watching coaches uh, draw, draw plays up on the chalkboards. <laughs> That's true. Got to get out there and do it.
I thought about learning to drive. You, you can read all kinds of things in a book, but it's totally different when there's something wrapped around you with four wheels that you're trying to keep connected to the ground. <laughs> our neighbors, our neighbor's daughter just turned 15 and she's been driving off and on. And I told her, uh, it's been three or four weeks ago. I said, Abby, there, you got to remember one thing when you get behind that wheel in that car. In between your two hands, you have a killer. Be careful. And she said, I've never heard that. And I said, well, that's, that's okay. That's okay. Just keep it in your mind. We've got a, uh, just down the road from us, a, a neighbor, they have student and driver on the top of their car in the back. And yeah. it just reminds me to, you know, if somebody in front of me is going 10 miles under the speed limit and I'm back here going, you know, with my facial expression, shaking my hands in the air like that right there, you know, that that may be somebody learning to drive and they're they're a nervous wreck already. Uh, you know, I shared something yesterday about about driving a stick shift, you know, shake, yeah. you know, shake it a little bit, a little make bit. sure it's in neutral and all that. I yeah. remember the first time my mom put me in that truck that we had at the time and we had a, you know, it was a stick shift and I drove from Gadsden High School down um down the the hill back down to hickory street to go home and i was a nervous wreck and i was like i'm gonna tear this truck up because you know you gotta press the clutch in and you know don't make it go dead and all this so i'm like and i'm sitting there a nervous wreck so i just try to remind myself when i'm behind the wheel as you said jerry um uh, you know there's a lot could happen with my actions yeah so, and I also have a, just real quick, I have a, um, a guardian age angel pen, uh, that's on my visor in my car and it says mom on it. You know, I carry my mom around everywhere I go. She's my guardian angel. Um, and I firmly believe that everything that I've been through in that car just recently, you know, this past year, you know, we hydroplaned me and Jana did on this, on the interstate. And it was by the grace of God, guardian angel, my mom, the just heavenly angels that just, that just guided my car into the ditch with no damage to it. Couldn't get out. We had to pay whatever it was. I forgot now how much it was to pay to get us out of the ditch. But hey, I was just glad we were able to get out of the ditch unharmed. Car wasn't harmed, any of that. So, you know. Dominic. Yeah. Yeah, Dominique and I talked yesterday about some of the crazy things that he and I had seen on the highways. Yeah. People are just so angry now. <laughs> just I know. So angry <laughs> for no reason. Yep. Mm -mm. Not a lot of anger out here in the country. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's bow our heads. Precious Lord, help us to be understanding of the unique ways each person receives your good news. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, anybody? I'll, I'll do. do or go ahead, Jerry. I'll do Monday. Okay. okay. I'll do Tuesday before they run out. <laughs> All right, here we go with Mon Sunday, January 16, prompting. Haggai 1, 13, which says, Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. I had no reason to dislike this person. I called him that Christian in my head, but we also didn't have anything in common. I was 20 years older. He was a student. I was a maintenance worker. I've seen thousands of university students come and go. Very few ever spoke to me, but he did several times. He even remembered my name. He told me about Jesus and encouraged me to return to church. I need to get my life right before I go back to church, I told him. I'll do it later. I didn't know if he believed me. I didn't believe myself. He must have graduated because I eventually stopped seeing him around campus. That was 30 years ago, but I never forgot his encouragement. 
In time, I did return to church, and I'm glad I did. But I continued to wonder, what blessings did I miss because my faith was a low priority? <coughs> I remind myself that religion is not a transaction. Even when we ignore God's presence, God still loves us regardless. But a relationship with God does require our response. When the Israelites answered, God affirmed, I am with you now through Christ. God is always with us. Amen. And that comes from Andrew Michael Arduin from Louisiana. The prayer focus, those seeking a church home. And the thought for the day. Today, I will look for God's promptings in my conversations with others. You know, you just never know what one person says to another person is going to make them realize, I need to get right with God. I need to get my life headed down the straight and narrow and quit going to the left and to the right and over the top and under the tunnel and just go straight. Just go straight. Just look up and go straight. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. I, I've always heard people say, well, I don't have any church clothes. I don't have anything to wear to church. And I said, the pair of jeans and the t-shirt, God don't care what's on your back. He cares what's in your heart. Yeah. So that, uh, that worked several times also. Y'all may not have noticed it, but Sunday I had on blue jeans and tennis shoes. God don't care what's on your back. He cares what's in your heart. And we know what's in your heart. Yeah. You know, what really struck me about this one is uh, I think back over the last eight and a half years, how many times that we have been blessed by being a part of the Horton Bend Church family. So, I don't have to ask myself that question, what blessings did I miss because my faith was a low priority? But it does make me think back to those years when I wasn't so active in church. And I wish I had a dollar for every time I've had somebody say to me, I need to get my life right before I go back to church. <clears throat> Now, unfortunately, a lot of people don't get that chance. And um, the longer you stay away from church, the easier it is to stay away. And, and I tell you, I, I just can't, I just can't express it well enough to how being a part of, of a church family, especially our church family, has, has been a blessing to me and my family. And, and and I just I I just I think about folks that are out there, and and let me tell you I've had my share of bad experiences in church. Uh, I uh, I had an experience and said, well, if that's what church is about. I don't want to be a part of. It. Never affected my faith. Always loved Jesus. Always loved God. My faith never wavered. But my uh, my faith in church folks did but uh i see now that that was a big mistake and i regret that but uh, uh i uh, i just have always uh, been blessed to be a part of the church and we we have been blessed by being a part of a lot of great church folks and, and church families and sherry and i talked the sunday we were out and said you know it's just not right being home on sunday morning that's just it's just a weird feeling it's just a strange feeling yes it is it is we mentioned it two or three times that day and it was an odd feeling when covid hit and, you know every, every, all the churches started shutting down and or limiting in-person attendance and stuff like that and you know online stuff is great but it's just not the same as being not there the same. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we can play music, we can play Pat and Sherry playing all day long on this thing, but it's just not the same as listening to him in person. And I'm just thankful that, you know, we got to come back to the church, you know, and, and I pray that, you know, and, and unfortunately there's probably some that prefer the online option more because they don't have to get up and do anything. You know, and if that's the way they get church, I guess that's that's better than nothing. But I, you know, it's just nothing like being there in person. There's nothing like it. It's just nothing like it. Did we lose Pat? Yeah, she dropped off a little while ago. I don't know what happened to her. Uh -oh. Hope she's okay. I'm back. <laughs> Sorry, I got a phone call. Uh, no, uh, Pat. We lost, we lost Pat. We oh, you lost you Pat. Pat. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we knew you were still there. We're going to send Judy out there to find her. Yeah. <laughs> You're kind of the minute. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can feel where your shirt sleeves come to out there tonight. <laughs> All right, Jerry, you want to pray? Yes, sir. I will take a prayer for us. Dear Lord, thank you for your unconditional love empower us to respond by growing in relationship with you amen and amen amen all right monday january 17th the title is stargazing and the scripture comes from daniel 12 verse 3 which says those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever I live in a rural area, and it's relaxing to step outside and gaze at the stars twinkling at night. When a meteor shower is predicted in my area, I stand on my back deck with my head tilted back to look for these falling stars. While standing on the deck with the house behind me, I can see only half of the night sky. There, were many, there may be meteors in part of the sky that I'm not able to see. Thankfully, God sees the whole picture. God created and knows of our past failures and triumphs, and God knows what the future can hold for us. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. We all know that one. Jeremiah 29, 11. God's hand is upon us every day, loving, guiding, protecting, and forgiving us. And amen to forgiving us. <laughs> um, God created the heavens and earth and all plants and animals, including us. We can give thanks that God can see everything as a whole and that each one of us is important to our creator. That comes from Lori Holvey in Illinois. And the prayer focus for this day, God's creation, the thought for the day, knowing that God sees the whole picture brings me comfort. I can relate to Lori's story here of going in her backyard or in the back deck and looking up and seeing the stars and how beautiful they are. Because even though we live in Birmingham, I can go out our back door back here. I'm not doing it tonight because it's too cold. <laughs> but you can go back here in the backyard and, and we've got a street light out here in front of our house, basically. But it's fit it's retrofitted to where all the light is pointed at the street and it's not like a full circle so it's really dark in the backyard so i've utilized that opportunity i've got a chair back there and we've sat back there before at night just looking up at the stars looking up at you know different things the international space station flying over if you've never seen that i encourage you to find find you a time when the International Space Station is flying over, just looks like a bright star, just, just you know, it looks slow, but it's really going quick, but um, yeah, but just to see, and, and it's just amazing to what our eyes can see when we look up and how vast and majestic the universe is, and we only get, we're, we're only seeing just a little bit of it from our vantage point here. I've seen all these people, all these, all these rich folks that have the opportunity to go up into space, you know, for 10 minutes and come back down that they've been doing the, doing a lot lately. And I was just thinking how cool that would be to look out that window and just look at the creation of, of the earth and, you know, what you can see around it. 
it's just a reminder to me that you know as the song says you know he's got the whole world in his hand and he's got the universe in his hand because he created it all so and to never fear with everything going on in the world and our country and everywhere else that he's still in control it doesn't matter who's here and who's there that he's he's still in control ultimately so that's what i remind myself of all the time anybody have any thoughts on this one amen my nephew I, i've told y'all that he flies for united he tagged me in a picture the other day and he said good afternoon to my newman family down there in gadsden and he took a picture from forty thousand feet of Gadsden wow. and posted it on Facebook, tagged wow. all the families. But I, I've looked several times when they talk about the meteor showers. And of course, with all the trees around the house, we'd have to go up on the mountain. We couldn't see a thing here. But I've, I've seen that for the Perseid shower several years ago. And I saw the Star of Bethlehem when it was here two years ago. Two I got to take now. this. Okay. Okay. So we, we can relate to seeing all the stars. And yesterday, last night, when we took Katie out for her nightly little trip, and the moon was coming up through the cirrus clouds. It was just, it was fuzzy, but it was really, really pretty. And I thought, you know, full moon, it was the wolf moon, yep. which is the first full moon of the year. Yep. But it's, it's so pretty when it comes up through clouds like that. Sunsets, you know, I, I've seen so many comments about God's masterpieces in the afternoon and the evening sunsets and the moonrise. And it's just <clears throat> amazing how, how gorgeous. We see pictures of Banff. You know, we went a couple of years ago, and we've seen pictures here recently of all the snow down the middle of town. And it, it's just, it, it's a painting that's worth a million words. You know, they always say a picture's worth a thousand words, but God's universe and his, his land creations are just words can't describe. Amen. Very good. Any other thoughts for anyone? All right, if not, Creator God, thank you for having your loving hand upon us each day. Help us focus on you so that we will make choices that bring you honor and glory. Amen. Amen. Well, I'll take obedience, if that's okay. Go right ahead. Tuesday, January 18th, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Psalm 111, verse 10. <clears throat> One of my daughters plays on a soccer team. At her first ever practice, the coach told her to kick the ball with the side of her foot rather than with her toe. My daughter insisted that it was better to use her toe because she could kick the ball harder and faster. And she had always done it that way. They went back and forth for a while until the coach finally told my daughter to try it just once. Reluctantly, she gave it a try and found out that she had more control and could still kick the ball far. She was convinced once she tried it. God's commandments can be like that. We think that we have done, we've been doing fine on our own. And often God tells us to do something that is not easy or that does not make sense. We may squirm and try our best to rationalize why that does not apply to us because our circumstances are different. We may forget that God's desire is always for our good. God tells us that understanding comes from obedience. When we follow God's commands, even reluctantly, we experience the blessings that come from obedience. And that is from Bob LaForge from New Jersey. The prayer focus is soccer players and coaches. And the thought for the day is even if it is not what I'm used to, 
I will follow God's ways. And um, I, I wasn't quite as hard headed as, as this guy's daughter, but I was a uh, I was on track and field from the time I was in pretty much seventh grade until I graduated from college. And I was pretty successful in high school with the shot put and with different things. But when I got to college, they tried to teach me a different way to do the shot put. And I will tell you, it really wasn't my brain that was reluctant. It was more so my body. My body was just used to doing it a different way. And the first time I tried to do it the way the coach had suggested, I fell flat on my face. I actually did a kickback and fell completely forward. And um, I will never forget that. And they said, are you okay? They're like, did you hurt anything? And my answer was only my pride. <laughs> and so <laughs> I got up and you know, I kept, kept working on that and, and was pretty successful with it. But I had discovered that I had sprained my ribs through that. They weren't broken, they were sprained. And it hurt to laugh and it hurt to do everything. Um, but there's times when obedience, we, we just feel like, oh, well, the way I'm doing it is the right way. I, I should be doing it this way. And, and sometimes God, you know, he prompts us, he sends us people, he, he gives us encouragement, he sends us his word. And we finally say, okay, Lord, I, I got it, you know. Um, some of you, I, I think everybody knows by now, but um, Hal is my second husband. My first husband was from the Middle East. That was stupid, but everybody, everybody has something to confess to the Lord and the Lord takes care of it. But it was kind of like, the Lord tells us not to be unequally yoked. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I hear you, but yada, yada, yada. And so, <laughs> um, I'm like, but Lord, you say you'd rather a person be hot or cold than lukewarm. And I had grown up with, a, sadly, a lot of guys that were lukewarm. They, they came to church until, you know, they graduated from high school, they graduated from college, or they got, you know, their promotion at their job or whatever their reason for coming to church was. When, when they had gotten past that reason, they just stopped coming. And so this guy, he, he prayed five times a day. The only thing that would stop him is if he was driving. And if it was time for prayer, he would pull the car over, pull out his prayer mat and pray. And I just thought, here's somebody who was following what they believe. He was dead wrong, but he was following what he believed. And um, when it comes to obedience, like there's times that God's got to say, listen, this, this command wasn't, you know, this, this isn't, God didn't tell us not to be unequally yoked to keep us from something good. He, he told us that to keep us from something evil. And um, sometimes yeah, with, with, with that one in obedience, I was like, yeah, I was super hard headed, but God still loves me. And he, you know, he spared me from that. And now I'm blessed with hell. Amen. Amen. Right. And it's almost our 10th anniversary. I'm so excited. Oh. <laughs> Woohoo! Wow. That's what I keep trying to tell Mariah. You want to do things your way, <clears throat> whether they're right or wrong, but you, you got to put yourself second. You've got to listen to the straight and narrow. If a boss tells you to do something, if you don't think it's right, you do it anyway, because he told you to do it. And that's what you got to do. And she's having a hard time with that. So anyway, <clears throat> that's a whole nother story. So let me guess, that is why a job for Mariah and JR is on the prayer list? Yes. Okay, I see up, I catch on, I write, I write stuff down. This is like the past couple of weeks. <laughs> yep, that's what it's for. Amen. <clears throat> I think of that song that we sing sometimes in church, where he leads me, I will follow. Yeah, I don't have a copy of it here or I'd play it for us, but um, I know we've sung it many times at church. It's in the hymnal, um, but it's just where he leads me, I will follow. And I don't know all the words after that, but I will follow, I will follow him, I think is the ending of it. So I'll go with him, with him all the way. There you go. That's it. Yeah. Where's no, no, Pat at? <laughs> <laughs> Here to play it for us. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. 
Well, to throw in part of the verse from yesterday also with this, Jeremiah 29, 11, um, I had COVID. I got, uh, I was blessed to be able to get an infusion. They called us on Monday and they said, hey, you know, the hospital got a shipment in. So I went on Tuesday, I found out they had only gotten six in. I was wow. one of the six. So I was, was truly, truly blessed. Wow. It was an interesting setup because there were two of us in a room and they, you know, they, they had the chairs like on opposite sides. So we were actually six feet apart and, and everything else. And they came in and checked our vitals and did this, that, and the other, and, you know, got the pumps going for both of us at the same time. And the, the woman that I was in there with, it, it was really kind of funny. She had her iPad ready. And when I walked in, she was about ready to put in her headphones, but she asked me how I was doing. And I said, I'm blessed beyond measure. And I was kind of like, you know, you're here for a COVID infusion and you're, and you're blessed. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, you know, I, I didn't know at that point that I was one of six, but um, I was, I just knew that, that God has, a, has a plan for me. So we, we talked almost the entire time that we were there. And um, she just, she referenced Jeremiah 29, 11, the fact that she's like, you know, God has been working in her life. And then she just, she said the reference and then, and I just said the verse, I was like, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord plans to <laughs> prosper you and not harm you. And she looked at me and we just, I mean, we talked, like I said, we talked the entire time that we were there. And at the end I said, we're, we're going to pray before we leave. And the lady had said, you know, you guys should be able to leave in a half an hour. And so, um, about 20 minutes later, I said, we're, we're going to pray. And she goes, absolutely you know so there are times when um when we're obedient to what god wants us to do and and sometimes it's a little thing he, he's he he wants to bless us like he just he absolutely wants to bless us and show his love to us so that's yeah. all all right well let's pray dear god may we always be quick to obey you help us to remember that your ways are always for our good Amen. Okay, right. I'll do generosity while our leader is out. Okay. Wednesday, January the 19th comes from Luke 11, 34, and 35. Your eye is the lamp of your body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But if it is not healthy, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, consider whether the light in you is not darkness. It was Christmas morning. I got up, went to the bathroom, found a ring of shaving foam in the sink. I hate it when he doesn't rinse the basin, I thought. Once I was washed and dressed, I went to the top of the stairs and noticed the curtains hooked up on the window, windowsill. I hate it when he doesn't straighten the curtains after drawing them back, I thought. Downstairs and in the kitchen, I began to prepare breakfast and found the dishcloth had been left balled up in the sink rather than spread out to dry. I hate it when I stopped mid-thought. This was the day I was supposed to be celebrating the greatest gift of love the world will ever know. And I could barely contain my irritation at the trivial differences in the way my husband and I do things. I was not looking at my husband with a generous heart. I determined to change my attitude. Day by day, I am seeking Christ's grace and love so that I can attend to my own faults and be more patient with others. And that comes from Helen Payne from England, the United Kingdom. And the prayer focused is someone, who ha someone whose habits annoy me. And mercy, we know somebody like that every day. <laughs> Thought for the days. When I am frustrated with others, I will focus on God's love for them. You know, we all we all have our little idiosyncrasies and puts if you put if you're hunting for something, if you put it back where you got it from, you wouldn't have to hunt for it. 
put it back where you got it. That way you know where it'll be the next time you need it. Yeah, Joey. <laughs> Sherry just hollered at me. I heard that, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just, mm -mm -mm. I guess we all have our little faults and nobody's perfect but the one and only. Amen. Amen. We know that. We know that. I thought she's reading about our house in this for this story here. For <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Well, I have all of these upper rooms. Look okay? at that. All of these, but with the, you know, with the code, with the Zoom code on. With the Zoom code on the front of it, but I couldn't find. You know, just periodically, some of them disappear. I'm like, I've got a year and a half's worth, or maybe more. <laughs> and I mean, God only knows. So um, anyway, <clears throat> I, I can say for me, I, there's there's times when I, I, I just hate it when I can't find something. And when it doesn't end up exactly like these go right next to the computer, <laughs> they don't go in my church bag, they don't go in the Bible bag, they don't go other places, they have to go right here. Because I took some with me and they vanished. <laughs> Well, it, it's kind of funny because if we put something up, we always put trivial things up where we can't find it. Um, last year, I bought a couple of electrical boxes and I put them up. <laughs> I haven't found those two boxes yet. <laughs> and Sherry and I, we get tickled at each other because well, that little man's been in this house again and moved it where we can't find it. <laughs> It's some kind of little man running around here. Oh my goodness. Chaos. 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 That's true. <laughs> but it's it's so funny. We laugh at laugh at it all the time. Recently, I um just a, a couple of weeks ago actually, um, I misplaced my AirPods, which you know you see here. Yeah. Um, you know, the AirPods are just what you put in your ear to listen to stuff on your phone or iPad or whatever. And for some reason, I just could not find these things. And the, the, the thing on my phone said they were last at UAB Hospital. So I knew that was on December 30th. And I knew that was obviously a time I had gone to pick up Jana and we were coming home. And I was listening to something and she got in the car and I took them out and I put them in my car, you know, whatever. And evidently I didn't grab them when I got out of the car, like I usually do, because I always put everything by the nightstand, wallet, yeah. you know, all the stuff you normally carry every day. It's right there by my night, by the, on the nightstand by our bed. And for some reason, they, they, these things were just lost. I, I really didn't, wasn't, you know, that was the time I was off from work and I really, you know, wasn't needing them or for anything and uh, you know things started getting back to normal again you know with the routines and everything like that after the new year and I got to looking for them things and I'm like I can't find these anywhere I, I, I literally turned everything in this house upside down trying to find these things <laughs> and at one time they were back here in this chair that's behind me it's like a you know uh, we call it the throne because uh, Jana has done a lot of her school studies in this in this chair right here oh. from college up until her master's now. And at one time they were buried in this chair right here. And you can't really tell or you can, but the, the cushion is white and these are white. It's a different oh. shade of white. So it's kind of blended in over there. But the longer, long, way too long story I've already told to make it shorter. Uh, you know, still was looking for these things, you know, just a few days ago and I finally found them and I was just looking in my car. I was like, I've already looked in this car five, six, seven times already, but I'm just going to look one more time. I looked in between the, the passenger seat and the console these things had fallen there and there there's like that much room <laughs> yeah. between the seat and the console it's very little like you barely i can barely get my hand in there these things had gone through that somehow and landed on that track that, that you know you can move the seat up and down, you know forward and backwards with yep. how they got there i have no idea <laughs> that little man yeah that little man been in my car <laughs> So it just drove me crazy. So I'm, I'm, I'm right along with this. Yep. I'm glad good. you found them. Yes. And, and I mean, these are, like I said, these are trivial things. Yes, it's, it's the worldly possession. 
that I could live without. But it's just the fact that I've been using it and it's it's a convenience for me, you know, and I've done a lot of those wired headphones or any of that. And I'm like, I want to find these things because I'm tired of using wired headphones. I've gotten yeah. so used to not using them. Right. Again, that's a worldly possession, not important, you know, in the scheme of things, but it just drove me crazy. <laughs> I can understand that. Anyway. Yeah. It's just like those two electrical boxes. <laughs> Yeah, we were, yeah, we were putting up ship lap and there was no stud, so I had to have two with wings to tighten yeah. against the sheet rock. Yeah. Couldn't find them, so I had to go buy two more. Yeah. Still hadn't found them. <laughs> You'll find them when you don't need them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Let's end this one out so Joe can close us out for 30 <laughs> and we will have a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, help us to learn from you how to be tolerant, forgiving, and loving to all whom we meet. Amen and amen. Amen. It's 8, 11, and y'all are just through Wednesday? Yeah. Wow. We were wow. waiting for you. We're yeah. killing time so you could get back and close us out. We prolonged this a long time so you got back. That. Well, that was, uh, I, I was talking with Julie, Texas wife. Oh. And, uh, oh. So she said, thank you for all the prayers. Amen. All right, here we go. Thursday, January 20th. The title is Tempest, Isaiah 41.10. It says, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. My wife and I stood on the balcony facing the Atlantic Ocean as the roaring wind rattled the palm fronds and large foamy waves crashed on the sand. We had to brace ourselves to keep our balance. We quickly went indoors, our eyes burning from the wind and our skin chilled from the driving rain. The next morning, bright azure skies greeted a glorious sunrise. Small waves lapped at the beach, palm trees fluttered, and all was peaceful. Life can be much the same way. The tempest of, of serious illness, anxiety, job changes, marital difficulties, relationship challenges, business setbacks, and other storms of life threaten our sense of well-being. Our faith may even falter, but throughout the turmoil, God is always with us as promised in Isaiah, and our hearts and minds can find rest and peace once more. That is from John R. Robinson from Georgia. The prayer focus is on those facing a life crisis. And thought for the day is God is with me through tempest and struggle, offering peace. <clears throat> you know, I think about the uh, the phone call I just got off of talking to Julie, and uh, you know, her life is forever changed, and uh, I think it's uh, all part of God's plan that. Uh, uh, that those of us who, who love her and her family uh, do our best to help her through this difficult uh, time in her life. Uh, but, you know, we all have, have gone through, uh, are going through, or will be going through uh, those same storms. And, uh, and I am uh, 59 years, I can tell you, uh, that God has been with me always, even when I didn't acknowledge it. God was always there and saw me, uh, saw me through the struggles in my life, got me through to today. Amen. Amen. Any thoughts? Just thankful for everybody that has been there for me and all my uh, losses in life with my grandparents and my mom and and different uh, different struggles I face, especially this church family here um, and everybody else that 
not listening or not on the call with us. Goodness gracious. The every every one of you and, and God guiding me through, my goodness. I, I just can I just can't imagine how people that just do not know God how they get through stuff like this. But Amen. Amen. All right. Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus. Be with us this day in tempests and in calm. Comfort us with the knowledge that you are always near. Amen. Amen. Amen for that. Amen. Well, Dominic's still awake over there, so y'all must have been lively <laughs> while we <y 'all>. Good. <sighs> well, I tell you what, it's, it's getting late for old folks like us. Oh, please. <laughs> Come on. Oh, boy. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't wait to get my age. This it's, it's not, is 9.30 Dominic's time. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But uh, the night is young, everybody. Come on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Party time. <laughs> oh, wait. 9, <laughs> 9.30. <laughs> Listen, nine thirty in the Poconos. You go to Lake Wall and Paw Pack, and you get a you get a a calzone. Oh, um, two guys or three guys, something like that. I can't remember the name of the place, but that's what you do that time of night. <laughs> that's right. well, it's eight fifteen in my house, and you know what it's time for? Uh oh, these things uh -oh. right here. These things uh -oh. right here. Mm -mm -mm. Well, that was the only two you got left. No, look look at this. I've got. Literally, uh, good night, Lynn. I told you, I got, I got a bunch left still. Is that are those chocolate? Chocolate? Yes. Are those chocolate? We have chocolate as well. Yeah, we didn't get any chocolate ones. <laughs> I'm telling you, every time I we went to the store, we we just grabbed up what we could <laughs> Christmas tree hoarders. Yeah. <laughs> For reason there's no toilet paper, people like that. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Why there was not any uh, Christmas trees? I mean, you, you know, you, you you would think that that they would just make big displays with them. I don't, but I don't think we I, ever saw any at the Italian Walmart. I I never saw any anywhere. Of course, I don't go to the store much. Well, the times, the times that I got them, uh, it had to be when this before the sun came up. Oh. I mean, you got to get out and get out early for yeah. stuff like this. I mean, yeah, That's mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, we all thank you. Y'all remember the uh, the Walker family? Sure will. Uh, yeah. The uh, not sure when the service is going to be. It's going to be at White Springs Baptist Church. But uh, anyways, uh, let's, let's all bow our heads. <clears throat> Lord, we come to you tonight uh, lifting up uh, the Walker family and all the other names that are uh, listed uh, on our long list of prayers tonight, Lord. We are uh, eternally grateful for all that you have done for us. And we fully acknowledge tonight that... Uh, we know that you have been there uh, through us every day of our lives, and we're thankful for that. Lord, we're thankful for, for friends and family, <clears throat> thankful for all the blessings of life. Lord, tonight uh, we uh, are, are just so thankful for this time we've got to spend with each other. Uh, and Lord, we uh, ask now that you would just go with us. Give us a good night's rest, uh, uh, a peaceful night's rest, so that uh, if we're so blessed to wake up in the morning, we'll be uh, renewed and refreshed uh, for another day to be servants for you. Uh, Lord, we love you and thank you for all things. We, we thank you for one another. And uh, Lord, we just ask you to help us to love our neighbors as ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray tonight. Amen. Amen. Amen.